do you ever feel like something is missing? Do you feel confused and perplexed about life? You don't quite understand why things are happening the way they happen. You have questions without answers. And you have hopes, dreams, and aspirations, and visions, and goals to achieve, but it's hard for you to reach forth to understand how to put the picture together, to have the bigger picture. Life, just like a puzzle, is where you have all these pieces scattered and you don't know how to fix them to have the bigger picture. In today's video, I want to speak about the missing piece. Welcome to my YouTube channel if this is your first time and welcome back if you are a returning viewer. If you have not yet subscribed, do well to hit the subscribe button. And if you like this content as it's going, give it a thumbs up. Number one. You can't figure it all out. No one has figured it out. When you talk about life, not everything in life will quite make sense to you. Even when you try to find answers, you won't find answers to everything in life. And a famous quote says that we live life forward, but we understand it backwards. Because most times while you are going through the motion of life and the things that you are experiencing, you may not really understand. Just like a puzzle whereby you might mistakenly force a piece into the wrong place and you'll be frustrated when you get to realize that that piece doesn't fit though and you're trying to rearrange it and that process it might take you to redo that puzzle and it's hard it's emotionally draining when you make mistakes in life but what can you do with your mistakes it is for you to learn from it and move forward you don't try to go and correct the mistake admit your mistake and go on you will experience failures in life which might come as a result of fixing the wrong peace into a position that it's not supposed to be. Maybe you say the wrong thing in your relationship, you make the wrong choice in life, you react wrongly to something that happened and all of this could make you regret and just feel like maybe if I would have another opportunity I would redo. But in life you have to admit and just move forward. You cannot figure it all out. Maybe while you were making the choice you made that fell out, you might have thought that it was the right choice. Yes, such as it is in the puzzle where you were trying to fix the piece and it looked beautiful like it was fitting until you realized it wasn't. So even when you experience what you call failure, you can use that failure to encourage you. Now you have learned. So it's kind of like this recurring thing about life. Every day you wake up is a new experience. Maybe in a relationship, if you have dated before, now you're dating again. You cannot use your old experience to judge what is happening in your new experience. Because the person you're meeting in this new experience is a unique person. You could be in any area of life. You can glean lessons from the experiences you have, but you should not judge the steps in life based on their experiences. Sometimes I could see the picture of David in the Bible and Joseph and the Bible characters that we read about, and it feels like their life really went well because we read about the full picture. But can you put yourself into their shoe just to imagine while they were going through it? Did they think their life was a life of faith for real? Did Joseph really feel like this was a life of faith? No, it was a life of struggle. It was a life where he was just trying to live it daily. He couldn't figure out everything. David could not figure out everything. He made mistakes in life. And the truth is, only one thing held them. They trusted God. And that is where faith applied in their story. Paul Apostle himself said, Not as if I figured this out, but one thing I do, I press forward. I keep on trying each day. I wake up each day to keep trying. You will not figure your life out, but you keep trying every day. Ecclesiastes says, Yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. And I know that whatever God does is final. Nothing can be added to it or taken from it. God's purpose is that people should fear him. So God keeps this thing about life a mystery and that helps us worship him. Because if you were to know everything and know God and figure God out, how would we worship him as God? So I love it even now that I come to this understanding that God is a mystery and we will always be hungry to search out more. That life is a mystery and we would always be hungry. Let us build that hunger. Let us allow our failures, our mistakes and the experiences we have to push us forward to keep on journeying through life. Number two, the search for satisfaction and fulfillment. To everyone, there's something that they feel like is missing in their life. And to me, I have something specific also that I feel like if it happens in my life, my life will be more enhanced. And everyone's own is different. To some people, it might be if I get married to the person of my dream, I'll be more happier than I am right now. 
if I do this, if I do that, if I do the third, the search for satisfaction is what everybody is looking for every day. The search for fulfillment is what people are looking for every day. And it's even the reason people fall into desperation to things. Solomon, the wisest man, according to scriptures, says that he has searched everything else. He tried everything and nothing has given him the true satisfaction that he was looking for. He had all the wealth. He had all the money. He tried everything pleasure. In Ecclesiastes, we have this old book talking about the meaninglessness of life on earth. That nothing is really satisfying. That nothing will really satisfy. Because in a puzzle game, if you are able to unpuzzle your puzzle and get the full picture, there is this satisfaction you have. But that's not how you view life. Because if you feel like everything has to come together before you are happy, everything has to come together before you are fulfilled, you actually miss it. It's just one thing that will satisfy you and we'll get to that. And it says in Ecclesiastes, everything is meaningless, says the teacher, completely meaningless. Everything is worrisome beyond description. No matter how much we see, we are never satisfied. No matter how much we hear, we are not content. Will it ever make sense of all the search that we go into the search for satisfaction in things? We are trying to search for satisfaction and that leads a lot of people They feel like if I have more sex, I'll be satisfied if I drink some more wine. I'll be satisfied. It helps me. It calms my anxiety. If I do this, all these temporary fix will not solve your problem of satisfaction and fulfillment. And Solomon continued and had many beautiful concubines. I had everything a man could desire. Anything I wanted, I would take. I denied myself no pleasure. So I came to hate life because everything done here under the sun is so troubling. Everything is meaningless, like chasing the wind. God gives wisdom, knowledge, and joy to those who please him. That is the beautiful part, the ending part. Because he said, I came to hate my life. I've tried to find satisfaction in everything else, and nothing was satisfying. And we see a lot of people today who are committing suicide, people that have a lot, people that are well-to-do, and they get confused in life, and they hate their life. Because they are like, I thought that this thing that I'm searching for will be the source of my satisfaction and fulfillment. I thought that getting to this peak of my career will be the thing that satisfies me. I thought that getting this job will satisfy me. I thought that getting the fame will satisfy me. I thought that getting this or that that I've been looking for and searching for is going to help fill my heart. But the truth is, none of these things can fill you. Your source of satisfaction and fulfillment in life is only God, nothing else. When you're living in your purpose that God has called you, that's what counts. It's not about living to lavish and do all the things that you want to do. It's good to be rich. It's good to have, it's good to build the house and to live in the house, but your identity should not be found in any of these things. The missing piece is not getting and getting and getting of all the things that you're looking for. The missing piece is actually the one thing that David said, one thing I've I desire having the presence of God with you, being dependent on God in life, knowing that your trust and your hope is in God alone. So true joy and happiness can only come from God. God gives this. This is a gift of God. Number three, finding the right peace. Your life, like a puzzle, may not be complete, but finding the right peace will bring you the joy of progression. It's just like you were arranging your puzzle, trying to unpuzzle it. And you're fixing the pieces and they are aligning each piece is fitting it will be a joy for you that you are progressing in the right direction and this is the truth about life the right piece is not about everything coming together the right piece is about the piece that fits in this season it could be in the season of your life in the season of your relationship knowing the right thing to do in the season that you are which means understanding the season you are in and knowing what to do in that particular season. Having questions about the problems in that season and having solutions. And now the right piece in the context of our life fully, who can help us with these solutions? Who can help us with this knowledge to live life and be fulfilled? Jesus said, I came that they may have life and that life much more abundantly. So if Christ wanted me and you to have an abundant life, how can we have it without him? Jesus is the right peace and i found it in life that sometimes we keep him as an option such that when things get hard we rush to him 
when we are in trouble, we go to him. He wants to be our friend. He calls us friend. And as a friend, it means we are prioritizing him. We are working with him. And with this, we will have assurance of safety even before trouble comes. The Bible says Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. That's so important. Everything was created through him and the purpose of the creation was for him. He existed before anything else and he holds all creation together. It is Christ that holds everything together. It is Christ that holds your life together. It is Christ that brings meaning to life. It is Christ that adds beauty to life. Without him, there is no beauty in life. Without him, life becomes vain. When you have this real relationship, you feel your heart pumping right. You feel this deep joy that emanates from your soul. So again, Christ is the right peace. For in him we live and move and have our being. And he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And scripture says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. What are all these things? From context of that scripture, it talked about all the things we desire for life. The food, the drinks, what we need to wear, the wealth, the house, the shelter. God wants to provide you with everything. But you need to put the right peace as priority. Christ is the preeminence. Let him take his place and everything else will fall into place. Jesus is the masterpiece of our life. Jesus alone is the foundational peace. By the time he takes his place, he can now direct your affairs on every other thing. So it says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Under this right peace, you have to understand that you are not living by your own self-righteousness because your righteousness are like filthy rags. So the scripture says, you are living by his righteousness, which is a gift. He provided it. God made him that knew no sin to become sin, that we who were sinners should become the righteousness of God in Christ. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I don't have righteousness of my own. It is the one that he provided as a gift for me. So I am seeking his righteousness first and everything in my life will fall into place when it comes to my devotion in life to him. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope that this video is helpful and valuable to you. Let me know in the comment section what are the missing pieces that you've been looking after and what have you learned from this video and what can you contribute to this video what are the thoughts that come to you as you were listening to this video i would like to hear from you and thank you so much for watching see you in my next youtube video bye bye